Welcome back, Hip Hop Curious, to another episode of 40 Years of Hip Hop, where we review and dissect a thousand songs over the span of 40 years from 79 to 2019. This is your host with the many allies, the G-Man, aka the G-Money, the incredible G when I get mad, and also known as the Wu-Tang fanatic. Be on the lookout for Forever Hip Hop Radio. This is our new project coming out soon where we deliver only beats and music. You know, people have been asking, we want to hear the tracks that you review and what you guys listen to. And on the podcast, because of copyright reason, we couldn't put the songs on YouTube because YouTube and Google is controlling everything. You know, we just wanted to showcase the songs. So we found a new medium. We created Forever Hip Hop. Check out our IG, Forever Hip Hop. And our website on 40 Years of Hip Hop will have a section called Forever Hip Hop coming in the following month. Today we'll be reviewing on episode 79, Total Wreck by Bahrain Media. Before, let's take a trip down memory lane. As a young hip hop lover, I was familiar with listening to a great MC rapping over a dope beat. To me, all music was done by the members of the group, mostly the DJs. That was a time when most groups gave props to DJs and actually add an official in-house DJ. My favorite artists and groups like Big Daddy Kane, EPMD, Eric, Bar- Eric D and Rakim, Steta Sonic, Kuji, Five Boys, Run DMC and many others all had DJs that contributed to the music. It wasn't until late 1990 when I saw the video of Lord Finesse track Strictly for the Ladies. That's a song that will make my list, that's one of the dopest cracked by Lloyd Finesse. I got interested in the producer credits because when I heard the dope song was produced by DJ Premier and I was like, DJ Premier, he's from Gangstar. I was like, hold up a minute, you're not in the same crew, how come you got to produce this? Because that's when I started to look into the credits of all my cassette tapes and collection and I discovered and learned there was a lot of ghost writing and producers making beats for other rappers. Hence my topic of DJ Premier who created a new series called So What's Up on his YouTube channel Premier Was Here. DJ Premier presents a salute to the floppy disk by exploring his most classic productions and how the technology of the time influenced the sound. And he's, he's telling you the process, we didn't have Pro Tools, all the digital stuff. Now everybody's a producer because it's so easy, but back then you had to use machine. And that's where I got interested. And I went to school, I went to Trevor Sense Institute to learn how to be a producer and work with the machines and everything, do recording. On the episode one of his series, he talks about how the track come clean from Jerry the Dimaja, that's another song that I'll sure make our list, came to be. I could listen all day to veterans like Premier talk about how the legacy was created. Go check it out and subscribe to his channel. It's called Premier Was Here, yeah, and the series is called So Was Sa. Also, be on the lookout for this week's next episode on Friday by my partner in crime, Mr. Ron. He will review Antidote by Travis Scott. As a purist, the new hip hop, I'm, I'm a little bit reluctant. I'm not open, it's not that I'm not open, but it has to be discovered, you know, because there's so many rap artists out there and you can't follow me. And Mr. Ron is the one that makes me discover some of the younger generation of rap icons. The commercial ones and friend friend friends, I mean. I'm more into the newer generation of MC that stick to the basic of hip hop and rap or look up to the older gods, you know, all this a classic beat. Travis Scott's musical style has been characterized as ambient music when I read. Even Travis Scott himself says he's not hip hop. What's your take? Can't wait to hear Mr. Brown's review about it. Now back to our review. Total Wreck by Bahamadia. The single was released in 1994, but it was included in 96 on the first album, College. What is this original? It's three minutes plus of pure rawness. Total Wreck was the first 12 inch release from a classic album, College, as a single. And it was dropped in 94, like I mentioned earlier, with production by Guru, Rip to Guru, rest in peace. The original test press of the vinyl had a sticker on the cover saying, she's dangerous with the one to check. I remember that sticker on the vinyl, it was like, oh, who's that cat? And then I can remember when I first heard a gravely voiced female MC with a, metaphys- with a metaphysical dope style rapping in a black and white video. I was like, who's that? 
Her name was Bermadia. She sounded like a roughneck coming with like rage in Aprofus. She came with a distinctive baritone that gave her a unique edge in a crowded world of MCing. She came out of nowhere with a bang, such an original flow for an East Coast boom bath female rap artist at that period. True ruggedness. For all these reasons, I had to go with a 3.75 for the chat. Fun fact. But her media got a break when Guru of Gangstar heard the taste of a local filler hit single called Fog the Vibe. He was impressed by her rhyme skills and then he put her on his self produced Hill Kid Records sampler. That was a, a mean for Guru to promote a new local talents they found because him and, and Premier founded the Gangstar Foundation and they had groups like Big Shug, Group Home. And they wanted to display and get a label deal for them. And he had his little production called Hill Kid Records. And on the sampler, he built a buzz and the tactic worked as it did with Jerry the Dimagers Come Clean. It was on the Hill Kid Records sampler. And courtesy of Disco.com, all music and hip hop nostalgia for the information. Delivery lyrics and flow. The song's lyrics are out of this world. For a female MC to be this hungry and raw, she immediately gained worldwide pounds for an infectious and unprecedented sound. Yet, she was still underrated at the time in the male-dominated hip-hop world. The energy she delivered was so strong with an aura of destruction on this track. After hearing her speak these ill verses and street smart funny metaphors, I knew this young sassy lady was positioned to show the world she can definitely flow. Her formidable rap skills make her more than just an incredible MC after becoming one of the most sought after lyricists on the underground scene. Bahamadia earned the respect that allows her to declare in freestyle verse, I'm a rap fanatic. Phenomenal at it, a syllable savage reading or of the cabbage, this chick is bananas. Wow, <laughs> that's simply marvelous. As a hip hop carnival I got on verse 1, Fat like Jew when I swing, it smokes the microphone like heroin when you stink it. Busting with the fam, goddamn the rocket get rough, and the purse stays stuffed like the girl when she knock up. Plus, staff to tangle with when I get mental and burn like a prostitute's genitals. Genderous with the one to check by her media, can I get to the wreck? Wow! On verse 2, I got. Launch your metaphor upon it lovely and gorgeous. When angry skills past the point of pill, that's how I feel when that is not a good enough adjective. So fade to black, the new kids back on the block, heart like, heart like cement rock hawk, with Tef and Nelly blowing up the daddy belly. Constant finesse as my fools of various dangerous with the one to check, but her media can I get to the wreck. On verse 3, I got a whole verse, man. That's the most exciting part. Rhyme exiting from the grill, BTD graphic, drastic. The method men couldn't stop my madness. I'm optimistic that the sound of blackness, the voice, wackiness, and red spots on the mattress. When I give it to your men in your bed, cause I'm kinky as the dreads on Ziggy Marley's head. Just kidding, but I bust ass like my shit. And when I froze on, like a 16 ounce bottle of avian. Words, words, absolutely gone. And I'm sober like the horn on the head of a unicorn. Back in Philly, people say that I'm the John and the Buzz Buzz the first, but my face represented on dangerous with the one to check. But how many can I get to the wreck? That was definitely ill. Some words were not totally exact because even everywhere I searched, courtesy of genius.com, they had to censor part of the song. I don't know why. It wasn't that it was that bad, but they were missing points or words in the in the lyrics. So I had to listen and figure it out you know so she has a, such a distinctive flow so it was hard to me for them to get certain words courtesy of digits.com like I mentioned and for all these reasons I had to go for lyric with a perfect score of five out of five fun fact the term in slang John originated in Philly and it's used in replacement of an any noun John can be used to describe anything, like her, the way she meant it, it's like people back in Philly say that I'm the John, she's the shit, she's everything, you know? And technically a John is a noun, it's a, it could be a person, a place, or a thing. And it has been used in recent years by Drake, Future, 
made in TYO, Mick Mill, Wally, Rose Rose, Rowdy Rebel, and many more rappers. Now, drum roll please. It's time for my top five Bahamadia tracks. I got in 96 from the album College, Tree the Hard Way. Oh, that joint is so ill. This song sure will be my thousand list because it's three female MC spinning. It's with Mocha only and I don't remember again, but it's, it's that's why it's called Tweet Aura. There are three MCs, you know? So you're gonna get to hear about that song. And then I got Total Rake from College 1996, the album. And then you got Paper Thing, that's from the B Girl Sessions, the best of Bahamadia from 93 to 2004. That was a, a mixtape that she had. And she just retook the beat of Paper Thing by the MC Night and she flipped it in her own version. It's really amazing. It's an homage to the great MC Night, you know? And then you got the song Rain from Good Rap Music in 2005. We have the last joint of my top five is We Here from the album here in 2015. You can all check out on Abigo's website and you could go check it out. Production and beat. Total Wreck is a chunky mid-tempo groove with a crisp snare, precise hi-hats and a quick cut on the hooks from DJ Ski Bits. Ski was discovered by DJ Clark Kent and was originally known as MC Will Ski in the late 80s. He began his recording career as one third of North Carolina's first hip hop group, The Busy Boys. Me, I always thought DJ Ski Beats came from New York and he's from NC. In the early 90s, Ski moved to New York and was a member of the original Flavor group. That's what uh, they had a great, great song, uh, Can I Get Open, that featured young Jay Z. That track was so ill. And that group, Original Flavor, was the first group managed by future recording industry executive Damon Dash. In the mid-90s, Key converted to production and started working on the duo Camp Load's debut album, Uptown Saturday Night. That's another classic album. There must be a joint or two from that album that will make our list be on the lookout. And then, after working on that album, Damon Dash called him to work on the debut album of Jay-Z. Reasonable Doubt in 96, marking the first major production placement for Ski. He produced four tracks of the album. After the critical success of Reasonable Doubt, Ski continued to work with Jay on his second album, My Lifetime Volume 1, as well as non-solo albums and compilation projects until 1998. He has credits over as a producer, writer, remixer on over 292 songs. That's really impressive. And then you got the main producer of the beat, crew of Gangsta, that produced the track. The track was on the sampler project, it's called Ill Kid Records, and it was recorded at the famous D&D Studios and Firehouse Studio in NYC for Guru Production. Guru produced that beat. When I found out, I found out like many years later, you know, I never expected Guru to produce such a boom bap style of rap. It's amazing. That's the best Guru produced song I ever heard. That's my style. Even if his production skills were overshadowed by his own DJ premiere, Guru made his mark on over 196 songs as a producer or co producer of quality projects such as classic gangstar joints that we all know and other genre of music such as artists like Salt and Pepper, Jerry the Damager, MC Solar. Gangstar Foundation, Blondie, Delight, Lisa Lisa, Group Home, Big Shark, Annie Lennox, Adam Clayton and Larry Marlin from U2, Macy Gray, Das FX, M.O.P., my girl Jean Gray, yo this man was a machine, may you rest in peace and power guru, gifted unlimited rhymes universal. The beat contains three sample vocal lyrics from Flo Jo by Fat Jo in 93 and the drums on Magnificent Sanctuary Band by Donny Hardaway in 1971. It also has vocal lyrics from Message to the Grassroots by Malcolm X in 1965 speech. And courtesy of WhoSample.com, for all these reasons, I have to go for beat with a perfect five. So do the press me Fun fact. Message to the Grassroots is the last public speech delivered by Malcolm X on November 10, 1963, before he left the Nation of Islam. 
The speech was delivered at the Northern Negro Grassroots Leadership Conference, which was held at King Solomon Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. Malcolm X described the difference between the Black Revolution and the Negro Revolution. He contrasted the House Negro and the Field Negro during slavery and in the modern age. And he criticized the 1963 March on Washington. Message to the Grassroots was ranked 91st in the top 100 American speeches of the 20th century by 137 leading scholars in American public address. A few weeks after delivering the speech, Elijah Muhammad, the nation's leader, silenced Malcolm X for comments he made with respect to the assassination of President Kennedy. On March 8, 64, Malcolm X announced his departure from the Nation of Islam. In some ways, message to the grassroots can be viewed as a sign of Malcolm X impending separation from the Nation of Islam. In it, he spoke not as a Muslim minister but as a leader of the black masses. It's a must listen to any black man that wants to learn a part of Afro-American history, heritage, and struggle. Before we get back to the next section, we at 40 Years of Hip Hop use Buzzsprout to broadcast our podcast and get our show listed on every podcast platform available. So far, our podcast is listed on over 20 platforms and reached 10,000 downloads in less than a year. As a Buzzsprout member, you will get a great looking podcasting platform an audio player that you can drop into your website, even WordPress. You will also benefit with detailed analytics and tools to promote your episode like audio video snippets of your podcast called Soundbites. My favorite benefit is that I get to generate a second review by talking about something that I'm passionate about. Think about it. Are you a fan of something? Try podcasting about it. It's as easy as one, two, three and can generate you a secondary revenue. Get started for free, no credit card required, cancel anytime. No contract? Use the link in our episode notes to let Buzzsprout know that we refer to you. And if you sign up after your travel to a paid plan, you'll receive a $20 Amazon gift card and help support our show. Buzzsprout is the way to go. Relevance and longevity. Did it stand the test of time? If so, how? The song did well on the underground circuit and real hip hop heads. Remember that song. This was a major Philly underground classic. It is only relevant among hip-hop ads and sadly wasn't known to the broader commercial hip-hop audience. Such a gem piece. It is, until this day, this track. The song charted and peaked at number 50 on Billboard Dead Single Sales. But the album College peaked at 126 on Billboard 200, number 13 on Billboard Top R&B Hip-Hop Albums, and number 3 on Billboard Hit Seekers Albums. The song was remixed by Gru on the Remix Street version and the Remix Radio version because the song had technically four versions. It was sampled on only one song, Rug- Rugged and Rough by Bohemian in 1996. For all these reasons, for relevance and longevity, I had to go with a 2.75 out of 5. As for impact, how did it impact the pop culture? The song's impact on hip-hop is not much either. If you're not a real MC or hardcore hip-hop rap fan, it hasn't impacted you at all. Until now, when I hear this song, I get the thrills and shivers of pure hardcore rap rap. An aggressiveness a female MC hasn't had until the great MC Serac came through in the early millennium. She has brought to the game that pure raw energy and skills level that Bohemia had at the time of this track and album College. Where Medea stated that she didn't have any creative control when she released the project, just followed what she was told and proposed to. To me, it was great, but to her as an artist, I know you made her and involved musically and artistically, and she went with a more laid back and jazzy sound on future projects. In fact, many influential music scholars credit her as being one of the original MCs to gain Philly international acceptance in the hip hop community in a major way. Big up to the Queen Bahamadia and keep up providing us with that lyrical rawness. For all these reasons, for Impact, I had to go with the tweet. A fun fact, Philly rap veteran turned producer Bahamadia is back with a brand new instrumental project called Dial Up, a four-part installment series exploring beat-making fundamentals via mobile production on an iPhone 7 Plus made with no samples. 
Always ahead of the curve, the prolific Maverick presents these short 10 to 12 minutes pieces to showcase her skills behind the digital boards. It features a plethora of weird sound designs and manipulation techniques that go beyond the expected not typically found in today's current sphere of hip hop. These capsules also feature luminaries such as Geeky Swede from Kev Lo, Rasco from Cali Agents, Kev Brown and many other prolific, prolific MCs. And as a total, it came with 19.50 for a total of 78%. Thank you fellow hip hop viewers for tuning in into our weekly podcast at 40 years of hip hop.bossproud.com. We're now available also on Mixcloud. Our podcasts are there. And our Mixcloud channel is called Forever Hip Hop. And click it on the supporters hard icon to buy us a copy so that we can continue our weekly podcast journey until we reach a thousand episodes. We're also available on all major podcast platforms, YouTube and Daily Motion. Follow us on social media at 40 Years of Hip Hop on IG, Twitter, and Facebook. Links in podcast notes. We've also made feeds by top 50 hip hop podcast list at number 40. Go check the list. Links in our episode notes. I'll be back next week with drumroll, please. Funky Dividends by Three Times Dope, another classic. This is the G-Man signing out. I'm Audi 5000.